All right, some more updates on the Camaro. So, the fans have never worked on this car ever since I bought it. Um, they had a B-body motor in here. B-body LT1 motor. The reason I know is because the front bracket's different. It's bigger, sticks out farther. The pulley sticks out farther on a B-body, and it has iron heads. So, um, that's what it was in here. So, someone put a B-body motor in this. And when they did, they never did wire the fans up correctly. I had a little thermostat thing that stuck in the radiator right there. And it would tell the radiator when to kick on and off. And I paid 70 bucks for that. I never even should have done that. Because I got to looking over here. I might have pulled the fuse box out and traced the wires back and everything. Right here are the wires for the fan. These are the power wires. The ground wire just goes to ground. I'm going to ground one fan here and one fan over here. But I hooked all this up. And I went into the tune, went into the scanner, and went into that one thing where you can automatically turn the fans on, and it works. It works just fine. So why they cut those and didn't put them back where they went is beyond me. But that's awesome, so now I can make the computer control the fans. But I ran out of my little butt connectors, and it's the 4th of July, and nobody's open. So, But anyway, so I have to get some butt connectors for that, and then uh, finish that up, and then that'll be working. And then um, I hooked the nitrous up. Well, I kind of hooked it up. I made a little bracket out of sheet metal. Just used a sheet metal angle grinder and a drill. Them nuts and bolts are too long. And I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get four nuts and bolts and shorter ones. And then it just goes to the fuel rail. I just bent that sheet metal on that bench over there. I just. Um, Stick the sheet metal down in between these boards and bend. And I just kind of guessed at it. And I had to straighten it out and rebend it a few times, but it looks good to me. Painted it all pretty, put it up there. So, this is already all hooked up. It's been hooked up on this car before. The fog lights turn the nitrous on, which you got to have the headlights on. So if you see me running the headlights in the daytime at the track, that means I'm about to spray the nitrous because there's no button in there. There's a button for the bottle heater in there because it's got an automatic bottle heater on it. Well, my one nitrous bottle does. And I flip that switch and it automatically heats the bottle up for me and it cuts off at 950 degrees or 950 pounds of pressure. But yeah. The nitrous lines have all been ran. This one right here, I have to get a bolt. I think that's a M8 by 1.5. Got to get a bolt for that to ground that. And then it'll ground back through here and it'll go up here. And it'll go to a fuel pressure safety switch that I put right there that I loaned my buddy Dustin that races that newer uh, LT1 Camaro. The newer LT1 Camaro. But um, there's just a fitting that goes there. And then... Um, it's got a port on it, and then the um, the fuel pressure safety switch goes right there. And that completes the ground circuit. So the fuel pressure doesn't see the appropriate amount of fuel pressure. And if the window switch isn't activated, then it won't ground out and the nitrous won't come on. But that's pretty much how that's hooked up. So on my fuel line... <coughs> Sorry about that. All right, so on the other side of that regulator, let's see if I can point right there, there's an 8 a.m. orb fitting. So I'll take that out, and I'll put an 8 a.m. to 4 a.m. fitting, and then that'll just run right back there. Look, it'll fit, too. It just needs the fitting on it. Probably put a 45, and then this is a 45, and it'll go right there. And that'll be my fuel pressure. So 6 a.m. orb to 4 a.m. For that, that's my fuel pressure. Got to steal my fuel pressure safety switch off my buddy Dustin. And then um, get a bolt that'll fit in the front of the head there. 
and that's hooked up. Then we'll have nitrous. And then um, the exhaust right there. And the exhaust right here. So this one's a little bit lower, which isn't a problem. I'll just loosen the uh, V band up here and I'll pull it up and tighten it back up. I do need to do that. I might do that right now. I don't know, it's 4th of July. We're going to go watch some fireworks later, but eh, it's only 1 30. But yeah, got the catch can in. Everything's in. I'm waiting to put the shroud back on because I'm trying to figure out which way I'm going to run these um, fan wires. I mean, I can run those fan wires just straight over here, ground them both right here, and then wire them up here. Blue is fan one. White, yellow, whatever it is, it's faded. It's fan two. But um, I like to use them solder butt connectors, the ones you heat up and shrink wrap and solder the wire at the same time, and I'm out of them. So but I'm just leaving that hanging. But, I mean, the car's drivable. It just was, uh, it was wanting to get hot. It never got over 200 degrees, but it was wanting to start to heat up, and the fans weren't kicking on. My little... Uh, relay thing that I had to manually control the fans this thing right here it finally quit working on me but uh yeah which that was kind of cool because it had it uh had where it went to ignition switch source then it went to power to the ground for the uh, fans and then it had a green wire that would manually turn the fans on which was kind of cool but um yeah, all that's going to be controlled on the computer now. But yeah, not much to, not much at all to hook up the nitrous. So what I want to do also is I'm going to put a, uh, where that return line's at, I'm going to put something there to where I can run an ethanol sensor. Which I got an ethanol sensor in the car. I had to ruin the other ethanol sensor I had on the LT1 just to get it off. Because... There was no way to get a tool in there to get the di di quick disconnect off. Just like on that right there. There's no way to get a tool in there to get that quick disconnect off. I should have got the con where you push it. Actually, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to change that over to the side. The kind that you can just push on and it disconnects itself or, you know, something to that effect. But I want to put an ethanol sensor on the return line. I need a fitting. For the nitrous 8AN orb to a 4AN, um, I need my fuel pressure safety switch and a little piece that goes in between there that the fuel pressure safety switch goes on. I need to get that back. I'm repeating myself, I'm just trying to think of what all else I need. Those butt connectors. Yeah, and I mean the tune's really close. I mean I was... I was power breaking it in the driveway and I mean it's it's really close I've got it really close it, it starts up it idles it goes into gear without quitting it does good and I'm gonna go over everything I did on the tune in another video after I finish completely tuning it and then I'm just gonna go and do like a screen um, computer screen video thing and I'm gonna go into the tune I'm gonna show everything that I done to get this thing running another thing I need to do is this oil pan did not have a um, oil level sensor hole now my oil level lights low oil, low oil level light stays on that's kind of annoying so I'm gonna either get in there and pop the bulb or I'm gonna find a way to to ground that out or something like that where it, it doesn't come on but other than that, yeah, guys, that's where we're at. We're really close to actually racing this thing, driving it and racing it. Really close. But y'all like and subscribe and have a great day. And uh, the next video is either going to be a tuning video on how I tune this thing. Hopefully I'll have it tuned by then. Or Chris is coming back into town this weekend, and we're going to go to I-64 Motorplex or whatever it's called. And we're going to do index racing on the front of the track. And then we're going to do a back of the track heads up race and a small, star, small tire upstart class. So 
it's for the guys just learning to do, uh, you know, the small tire classes and for the people who haven't went rounds in a no prep um, uh, small tire class. So we're going to try that. 